Hello, my name is Holland Hubert and I'm a student of Oxon Hill High School. I have been a part of Patriots Technology Center under the biology section. And today I have with me, Mr. Michael Coker. Hello, Ms. Holland. Just to start, what's your name, your disability and some of the programs you've been in from middle school to now? Um, so my name is Michael Coker. Um, some of the disabilities that I face is ADHD and depression. Um, the programs that I've been a part of since I was in middle school until now um, has been Patriots. I've been part of Patriots Technology Training um, Center since I was in the seventh grade, starting off with their Lego Robotics. Okay, what program did you like the most to help you start your STEM career or any career? Um, the program that I liked the most to help start my STEM career was um, was the Lego Robotics. It taught me a lot more about teamwork. Uh, it made me learn something about myself that I never thought like, oh, I actually like this or oh, like this is something that I actually find fun because I used to love playing with Legos when I was younger. So knowing that I could turn a Legos into a robot was something that just was mind blowing to me at that time. So what were some missing pieces that were needed to help you pursue that? Um, some missing pieces most definitely was the training, which I'm happy that I actually got from Patriots. Um, it was also a mentor and teams to actually like a team to actually help me get to where I wanted to go. Seeing as how Lego Robotics and biology have merged, creating a sort of nanotechnology, what is your opinion on that? Um, my opinion on that is that it's, it's going to help a lot um, because there's some stuff that robots can't do that we can't do ourselves. So it's like if we actually put in the work for that, it will go a whole long way and to help uh, to help save billions of lives, honestly. That's what I personally feel. Can you foresee a time when robots will be small enough to inject into the body to possibly find clogs that could be stopped? Honestly, I feel like that time has already come. Um, we have advanced so much over the past years. Um, it's just all what holds in the future. But yes, to answer your question, yes, I do see that happening. What was your biggest challenge in life and how did you not let that distract you from your greater goals? My biggest challenge in life was actually accepting that I had depression because I've already accepted that I had ADHD. It was just me accepting that I had depression because my depression came on later in life. Um, I lost a lot in life. Uh, a real close mentor of mine, he had passed away um, a few years ago. So that's really what struck me the hardest and really made me like, actually feel my depression more than what I was feeling in the past. Um, how I didn't let that actually affect me or how I didn't let it stop me was I always just thought about what he would say and like how he would just be like, you know, keep moving on and stuff. Um, he was my pastor. So it was like, it was a real, our church was small and we were all close. We all knew each other like real close. Um, so it was real tough for that. Um, it was another, another challenge for me was, um, understanding the reason why I, mean, I, I was adopted at a young age. Um, so me understanding why I was adopted, that was, that was kind of a challenge for me because at the age that I found out, I, I wasn't, I didn't understand it. I didn't know why, like, why was I adopted? Why was I giving up and stuff? So those are really my two biggest challenges. But like I say, what helped me get through it was, just remembering, oh, I had to be adopted for a reason. Um, I also had to think about when my pastor died, um, that no matter what had happened, I still know that he's going to be with me. So that's really what helped me get through, get through these challenges every day. Okay. And so I hear you talk a lot about your pastor and your church. Are you involved in any activities? Um, I'm involved in my food bank at my church. Um, I'm also one of the junior deacons at my church um, because my dad, he's the head deacon at our church. So um, 
I, the junior deacon spot, I guess, falls onto me. Um, I'm also on our sound team in our church with the mics and stuff. Um, I'm also in the choir, and I'm also one of our musicians time to time. Okay, sounds like you do a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Man. Oh, and, and I help out with Sunday school. Okay. If you could change anything about your life, what would it be? Honestly, now that I now at the age that I'm at, that at the age that I'm at and looking back, I want to change nothing about my life because um it it's made me the person that I am. And I like the person that I am because I know that the person that I am now, I can work on to being the person that I want to be in the future. So me going back in the past won't help me with anything now. I, I'm still going to be me. So there's really nothing I want to change. And what's your biggest motivation in life? Um, my biggest motivation is my two little cousins and my mom. Um, the reason I say my two little cousins, um, one of my one of my cousins, he suffers from autism. So it's like, and his brother, they they they're really they're my hearts. Like like I would do anything for them. Um, I watched them grow up. So it's like. I, I want them to to know that to know that their big cousin is doing something successful that he's at that that I want them to see me as a role model, not just as oh that's my cousin, oh oh that's just a family member. I want them to see, oh that's Michael. Oh, I want to be like him when I grow up, or like oh I want to I want to do something that he does. Like oh he does sports, I want to be able to do that. Oh he plays an instrument, I want to be able to do that. It's like, I don't want them to, to follow like everybody else. Like their dad, yeah, they can follow their dad and their mom, but I also want to be like a role model uh, for, for them to be able to look up to in life. Also, my mom, she's my biggest, she's my biggest motivation in life. Um, it's so much that she's the, really the one who found out about Patriots. So if it wasn't for her, I probably wouldn't be sitting with you right now. Um, if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't have gotten into the Patriots. Um, and she's just, she's never given up. So for her to never give up, why would I have, why would I ever give up? Okay. That's really, that's really why. And just on a side note, my brother also, well, not autism, but he has Down syndrome. So what she said was really, I liked hearing that. So yes, um, it's a lot, but yeah. it's, it's joy. They bring joy. Yes. <laughs> oh, man. So where do you see yourself in five years? Um, where do I see myself in five years? Um, honestly, I don't want to say that I don't think about, I don't think that hit in the future, but I like to stay in the present and in the year that I'm in. I don't like, you know, try brainstorming all the way five years or 10 years ahead because it's like, not everything is going to go as planned. Maybe not everything will go as planned as I want it to. So it's like, okay, let me focus on what I know I can do this year. And then that will be able to help me get into next year. But where do I see myself in five years? Um, honestly, I see me furthering my education. Um, obviously getting me a my own apartment in five years. Um, and... In five years, my two little cousins, they will be graduating. So that's really something that I'm actually looking forward to. Their names are RJ and Eric. RJ is the one with, um, with autism and Eric is the one, the younger one. Um, RJ is in the ninth grade right now. He will be going to the 10th grade after, you know, this school year. And Eric will be going to the ninth grade. So it just, that's really what I'm hoping for. Like, okay. that's where I see myself in my future in five years, being able to still be their role model, being able to still be able to motivate, being able to be somebody that somebody actually wants to look up to. Um, I can't really say what I want for myself yet, because like I say, I want to focus on the, I want to focus on the now 
instead of like further down the road. Like I want to know what I can do this year before I actually focus on down the road. And what grade are you in now? Um, I graduated uh, oh. the year 2017. Okay, so what do you do now as a career? Um, as a career, um, I still like do like help out with audio and stuff because like I say at my church, but it's not just at my church. Um, I help out with audio with First Baptist Church of Glen Arden. Um, I, I actually, um, I have a job myself. Um, it's with culinary because I also went to trade school also just to get some certifications and stuff. Um, so right now it's with making food. Um, also I have certifications in electrical. So say for instance, if somebody when a light switch put in or like wires for like lights in the house put in, I'm certified in order to do that. But right now, um, I still just want to be able to further my education before I actually jump to my career field, which will still be robotics. So with Patriots Technology Center, what do you do with that? I was the keynote speaker at one of the conferences um, in, I think, 2015, 2016. That's one thing I do, like, if, say, Mr. Thurman, you know, he needs me to help do something and stuff. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll probably be one of the first people he'll call. And, of course, I'm going to, like, get to it because Mr. Thurman has helped me along, like, a lot. So it's like there's not – I don't know how I can repay him. So I will, like, if he needs me to do something, I'm there. I would still help out, like, when the Lego robotics start back up. Um. I've came back and actually talked to to the newest students and stuff. I would like to get back in, like back in the fold with Patriots, like how I was. How you continue to stay involved with Patriots, especially during this pandemic with COVID and everything like that? Um, like I said, the year of 2020, um, due to the pandemic and stuff. I haven't actually been able to keep in contact with Patriots like how I want to. Um, but how I've been going through with this pandemic, <laughs> um, my depression, like this has been a real test of how I can like cope with my depression because usually like I'm outside, I'll, I'll be doing sports, I'll be, you know, with family or something. I can't do that now. So it's either I'm in the house watching Netflix at work or studying. And personally, I'm not a person to, that likes to study. So it's like I have to I have to saddle down and actually get into it. Like it's not it's not something that's easy for me to do, especially with my depression, because I don't like being cooped up in the house all the time. Um it has allowed me, though, I would say it has allowed me to be able to strengthen my relationship with my parents. Um, my, my relationship has always hasn't always been strong, but it hasn't always been bad either. Um, it's just gotten us closer. Um, we are able to talk about stuff that I would have never talked about with them in the past. Um, and it's just gotten me. Got got it has also strengthened my relationship with God also, especially since I'm just either in the house or at work. Okay. So hearing you talk a lot about your depression and with this pandemic, how have you been able to cope with your depression or how have you sided with it during this pandemic? Um working out. Um like if I felt depressed, I would do push-ups. Um, because one of my therapists, um, he would tell me like when I would get angry and stuff, doing push-ups would actually just, you know, get the anger out. So I took his advice and I tried it. And honestly, it helps because it takes my mind off of wherever my mind is wandering to. Like I want to get this done. So I don't think about whatever my whatever that I was thinking about that was suffering my depression. And really my depression 
like some people's depression when they get depressed they become sad and stuff i'm not that type of person when i get depressed when i get depressed i get mad so it's like i need something to get my anger out so i would try to work out So what advice can you give to other people with depression or ADHD? First, I'm going to start off with depression. And the advice that I would give to people who also suffer from depression, don't let it stop you. I know that you will have your bad days and you have your good days, but always remember that there will still be good days even when you're having a bad day. Always remember that there will always be somebody that actually cares about you and that won't want you to give up. That's one thing I would say advice for people with depression um people with adhd um this is a hard one because personally i feel like i feel like everybody has a form of it just like some people do stuff more than others and some people don't do stuff more than others some people pay attention more than others some people don't but what i would say is with that um Find something that you like, not that you like, that you love. Because liking something and loving something is two different things. Find something that you love and stick with it. Because when you stick with it, it will just, your all your attention and all your energy will be able to go on to that. And you wouldn't really have to, you know, you wouldn't really have problems, I would say. Um, and also, don't let people clown you about it. Because... They obviously don't know what you're going through. They obviously don't know how hard it is for you. So whatever they say, eh, let them be because sticks and stones may break your bones, but words will never hurt you. That's, <laughs> I've had to learn that. So That's good advice. For those that don't know, what's the difference between depression and ADHD? Um. ADHD stands for Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. So usually it's like you're less attentive to stuff and you are and you don't want to be still. Depression is, um, depression is, is different forms of depression. Um, when some people get depressed, they eat. So when some people get depressed, you know, they cry. That That's really what most people think. Like, when you get depressed, you're just sad. No, depression can come, like, in different, in different, different forms. But the difference between ADHD and depression, depression is something that, that, that will, that can weigh you down. ADHD is something that, I, I don't want to say can weigh you down, but I don't want to say can't weigh you down either. It's all on how you manage your ADHD. Like a lot of people don't know that there's famous athletes. One athlete, for example, Michael Jordan, who's my favorite basketball player of all time, he suffered from ADHD. So, and what he did was he turned it into basketball. That and that's why I think he became one of the greatest basketball players of all time because he didn't let his ADHD define him. He defined his ADHD for himself with how he played the game of basketball. Um, depression. Um, there's a lot of actors that suffer with depression um, that people don't know. Johnny Depp, if people mostly know Johnny Depp for Pirates of the Caribbean or Willy Wonka. Um, he didn't let his depression define him. He defined his depression in his own way of how he played his characters. You see, so you can't really allow it to affect, like, you can't allow it to define you at all. You have to define it for yourself. So I, I can't really say the difference except, like, how I just said it. Like, I, I, I'm not well, well knowledge in order to go in depth on the difference of it. But that's, that, that's the difference that I know of it. Okay, well, thank you. It was nice talking to you today. It's nice talking to you also, Miss Allen. Have a good day. You too. Thank you. It was nice talking to you today. It was nice talking to you also, Miss Allen.